to see your fine minds to join us for our session. A huge, huge round of applause as welcome uh, very warmly and thank you so much for joining us today. The rule number two, 
I would like to call upon Ms. Destin Learn, uh, Adapt and Grow. Now, uh, if we see uh, how a lot of experiments or uh, I don't know to commission a very expensive market research today uh, to be able to know what the consumer differences are, at least for small time experiments. Uh, of course, for uh, industry growth and planning, I mean, these research reports are still very quiet, but I'm talking about more, more at the product level or consumer appeal and uh, salience. Uh, it is very much possible for us today to uh, do even price elasticity studies over a very quick three-day period to understand whether a 199 product is going to sell uh, better or uh, you know from a packaging size uh, or from a bundle. Uh, many aspects of this can be done in a very quick experiments to have learnings and immediately act. So this changes the game. Uh, if, if you are very uh, nimble and you are able to continue to invent and innovate uh, with the same pace as what all the e-commerce marketplaces do, um, it can change the game, and that's the new role, uh, new uh, uh, you know that's the name of the game as of today. The rule number three uh, is, is is something I want to just uh, uh, ask all of you to think about. How many times when you are browsing, you just buy that product which has editor's choice in the moment? Amazon's choice, bestseller choice. The at the scale at which all of these e-commerce companies are operating today. I mean, in India, you just have a duopoly. It's just Amazon and Flipkart as of today, and, and they're at the massive scales that they operate. The volumes swing massively the day you get a bestseller tag. So many of you could have run e-commerce, uh, uh, you know, campaigns or or very active on uh, or listed on e-commerce in a big way. Would know how important being in the top 10 list of Amazon is. So the bestseller tag uh, can be as good as a celebrity endorsement. Rule number four, a holy confluence of sales and marketing. So uh, of course, I mean, these forces have to come together to make a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, successful launches and successful growth and everything. But in a digital world, there is no choice. If you think about, um, you know, application of uh, reverse that of integration, in a digital world, uh, you know, you, you can do a discount and you can run a video promo for that discount and rapidly liquidate. Rapidly liquidate in a span of three to five days if your if your sales and marketing teams are working hand in hand. So this again changes the game. Uh, and uh, on the same lines, right, a lot of things are not done jointly, bundling, virtual bundles, um, and all of this. Uh, rule number five, uh, I think the ones again who are already listed on e-commerce would know how important uh, is the consumer reviews. A, 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 a buyer in Chennai, a customer of yours in Chennai, is heavily influenced by some somebody sitting in Patna. We don't have thought of this happening in the earlier days, um, right? So it, it's the opinions and the volume of these opinions and the frequency of it is again heavily swinging how consumer is, is making the purchase decision, uh, right? So uh, these are the five things that I thought or uh, you know basis our experience are the big swingers in the movers and shakers kind of a thing, right? Like, uh, which are changing the lay of land on e-commerce uh, with many new entrants challenging uh, well-established brands or well-established brands successfully launching new digital uh, first brands. Uh, uh, Sam also shared his number one advice today in his talk was be ready to launch digital first brands now so that you can uh, you know, be ready for the future. So I'm going to take these five rules into practice with a case study or you know, with an example or a hypothetical launch and how it happens. Uh, we have, as, as an agency, um, seen multiple launches now and uh, this is pretty much uh, uh, how things uh, uh, you know, get into a virtuous cycle. So you launch, let's say it's week one, uh, there is no organic sale. You have to spend some money to see the entire um, you know, cycle. So. Uh, the whole uh, milestone or rather uh, uh, the target has to be a big bang launch to achieve a very high daily run rate. Uh, so with many of the brands that we have launched, we have taken it from like a 0 to 500 units a day in a span of 4 weeks. So when you do that, uh, you get a bestseller tag. 
in a, in a short duration. So it could be a week six, it could be a week twelve. Uh, you know, that is all about how much, uh, how, how the category is and also how you plan media and everything. But the day you get the best of that, uh, you know, the organic uh, units search. Now that again changes how the A cost or advertising cost of sale, which is in words of ROI for, uh, you know, because A cost is a very e-commerce specific term. Uh, so your ROI jumps, the, you know, because, so the are needed to high sales velocity, high sales velocity got you a bestseller tag, the bestseller tag tipped off the organic units. And, and that changes how the ROI changes, uh, the ROI, that, that gives you a, a lot of room for funding this growth and that leads to a sustainable growth. So uh, this is uh, how the ACOS change would be typically. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, you see at the time of launch, the ACOS is like 130%. I have seen brands launch with 100% ACOS, but eventually stabilize at 30% or, I mean these are like, if, if it is FNCG goals, if it is appliances, of course, single digit numbers and 5%, 6%. So, a lot of planning. So this is actually, if you think about it, this is the armor on, this, on the sleeves of large established brands because a startup cannot think in, in many weeks ahead of time. For large brands, if they can assess the market size and the ambition that they have for digital penetration and the market, and uh, you know in a year's time, then they can actually fund this in a, in a rapid way uh, at the time of launch. Start from a higher cost, but have a target cost at which you will stabilize uh, and for a positive uh, GC. Uh, right. So this is how uh, we typically take launches uh, in the e-commerce world. Another thing is the NDB, the new to brand. Digital is so rich with data. Pretty much on a daily basis, I, I can see what is my uh, glance use, which is kind of uh, proportional to you know SOV of the traditional uh, media. Uh, right. So with the increase of glance views, pretty much I can plan it so finely that you know we do payday cycles or you know uh, Amazon also runs this super value release in the first week of the month. So people buy FMCG products in the first seven days of the month. I can rapidly increase my GV share during those seven days. And this is possible uh, unlike you know I mean of course it's possible on digital. In e-commerce it also becomes extremely important to plan this. It's not just possible, it's very, very critical to plan it. So these are some aspects of how to use the kind of signals we get in the in the e-commerce platforms uh, to uh, secure or progress or grow or whatever be the objective of the brand at that point of time and how to adapt for the same. I'll take another example. So let's say you have done all of these things and um, uh, so will you enjoy the status of sustained growth and um, uh, everything that we saw in the previous slide, uh, right? Uh, there's a steady growth and uh, not true. Uh, E-commerce is very dynamic um, every day. I mean, for the same reasons that we said that hey, it's very easy to get into a virtuous cycle of growth, it's also very easy to get into a vicious cycle of decline. So on e-commerce, the task doesn't stop after we have grown or stabilized at a particular cost. A lot of testing and recalibrating this can be done. I mean, it's not necessary to be always applied, but I'm saying this is the opportunity there. So we launched a product. At, uh, uh, I think the actual price was 199 and 249 or something of the page there. Uh, and we launched a product with a very small discount. Uh, and the because of the price parity, I think Nagra spoke about price per grammage. Now, price per gram grammage is something, gram is something which are discussed internally in the companies. For an e-commerce customer, it is visible on, on the platform, pretty much on price per unit, price per gram. So it becomes a very rational decision of uh, money, choice, and uh, you know, uh, in, uh, and even the influence. They can choose to reject the influence, um, uh, like, like in a retailer uh, setup. So what happens is the moment there is a price discount, uh, it is, you know, usually, I mean, the volumes can rise. But the experiment is, does the volumes rise to the extent where I can fund the discount, uh, right? And do I want to, uh, you know, use a luxury product? A luxury product will never do this. But, you know, in, in a lot of mass uh, uh, consumption products, 
this might be highly relevant. And I can, I can do this experiment in a short period, as I said. And, and that gives a lot of power in how we do um, uh, you know, uh, the product pricing, bundling, and any of this. Uh, there is also another way in terms of new brand as a brand on e-commerce. Uh, I can take a fine brand uh, breakdown of audience words. Nagaraj in his talk was talking about how we, we can shift it to, you know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, not just uh, from the no, uh, like unlike the NCCS uh, 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 cohorts, uh, right? It's it's more about affluence and interest in you know um, um, uh, the kind of content they consume. A lot of these are signals. So again, digital is very rich in this data. Where if I want to grow into new categories uh, or new adjacent markets, uh, it's very uh, predictable in terms of what is the size and how much can I grow. Uh, so this, this just gives a lot of uh, power in your hands uh, as to how you can up, um, operate in the e-commerce uh, uh, platform. I think a very, uh, uh, the next phase, let's say if you're recalibrating, you're growing NTP and everything, a typical thing for a market leader, uh, this is a case study of a market leader uh, in a consumer electronics, uh, not a market leader, a top three player in a, in a consumer electronics state, uh, as to how they perfected the sale period, the Diwali sale period that happens on Amazon. So, if you if you think about yourself and how you shop during sale periods, let's say, usually we buy the high uh, value goods in the first few days. People add these products into the cart almost like a week ahead of the sale. So, Prime Day sale opens at 12 in the night by 8 a.m. A huge amount of revenue is lost by Amazon. This happens in the, they have almost mimicked the Black Friday trend in India now. So, this particular consumer electronics uh, company, which of course sells uh, items that are uh, you know, in, in 10,000 to 50,000 you know, uh, kind of a range, planned all their media budgets to the initial pre uh, a big spike in the first three, four days, and later, the top three bestsellers in that category turned out to be from this brand, which was previously not the number one, and even today it's not the market leader, but the top three bestsellers on e-com during the very valuable October, like November month, um, turned out to be uh, from the same brand. So that boosted organic, and that again created the uh, virtuous cycle of high sales, and they had one of their most fantastic uh, digital um, sales in the, in the last few years. how uh, the competition share and brand share, even though the media was not deployed evenly over the month, um, it just stayed because the organic and the bestseller boosted the share for the rest of the month. So, uh, these are the five rules uh, applied on many, uh, you know, uh, in a launch kind of a case for a market leader to footrest. Um, or uh, to uh, challenge, a, you know, for a challenge of brand and everything. So if you're doing all this right and you mastered the rules, what next? Digital has, uh, the e-commerce has a lot more in store. So I want to just take a minute to talk about uh, and, and open up the imagination for you as to what more can be done. Uh, we, we have deployed an automated bidding engine for a market because coverage uh, is uh, a FMCG brand uh, um, for uh, focusing on the coverage. Coverage is the same as the, uh, you know, you can assume it's very close to the SOE kind of a uh, definition. So, uh, what it does is, uh, um, uh, it's initially, right, uh, the whole uh, search impression Cost, cost of CPM, the cost per impression was at a certain range, which was a steady rate for the market. And because the bidding engine could find these spots, which were extremely efficient to buy, uh, and it knew whether prime time kind of equal at 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, what does it, what it do? And uh, in the afternoon, when the computer's, uh, you know, aggressiveness in spends is low, can I garner more impressions? Is it useful? Right? And it takes multiple factors into uh, consideration, and we could uh, spike up the impressions um, in, 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 in an automated fashion uh, at a very sustainable rate. Uh, I think there is a lot of inefficient, not inefficiencies, but like 
think a lot of hacks are still possible because these platforms are evolving. Uh, and uh, given a targeted sampling, I think the basket is sampling as, a offer, as, a, as an offering. Uh, Amazon has uh, extremely rich forwards for DSP advertising, which can be treated as sampling like awareness to trial kind of a, um, aspect. So these are some things to look at, uh, you know, for the future to dominate with data. Uh, which is available in real time in massive volumes um, on e-com, uh, which was never available otherwise. So with this, I uh, end my talk uh, and um, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge round of applause. Let's bring in energy in the room and. Uh, we are now in right, round from the CEO of TV and Radio India today, two to five people join us. Rahul, we'd like you to give away a memento. Thank you for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, on the stage is Joe Kirmani and the Rahul Shaw, and we request Rahul to now give away a memento. To On behalf of co-part by partners, Yahoo.